Hello, I'm Craig Birch here at Leicester City Football Club where we've just had the press conference, cycling promotions, Barry McGuigan where, oh, this man is a, how times change, eh, Joe Hughes? You've come from, you know, all the disappointments of drawing that British title fight and now you've jumped all the way to European title fights against Anthony Ejits. That's going to be at the Leicester Arena on Saturday, December the 2nd, the same place where you, you box Tyrone Nurse and the... Uh, Boxing's a funny old game, isn't it? Yeah, it's strange. It's funny how it can change. You know, six months ago, you know, very obviously bitterly disappointed with the draw. Um, obviously believed I won the fight, but, you know, didn't, didn't walk away with a belt from a draw. So, massively, massively disappointed. And then here we are six months down the line, you know, in line to challenge for the European title. So, you know, really excited about that. Of yeah. course, of course. And obviously Tyrone Nurse, that was a sp uh, majority split draw, wasn't it? Because obviously the one... The one it was a judge each, and then the other judge had it a draw. Yeah, yeah. You were obviously disappointed with that. You hoped to get a rematch quickly. He instead got uh, cash is mandatory. I believe you had to box somebody else just for the right to get another shot. And, uh, you know, from being so disconsolate and then all of it, just tell us how this opportunity came up and how this came to be. You know, yourself and Barry McGuigan and the EBU shot that you're now going to enjoy. Yeah, well, obviously, after the fight, like you said, we were hoping to get a rematch. Um, it didn't materialise. Uh, the board ended up uh, making Jack Catterall the uh, mandatory, which he went on and beat Nurse. Um, I was sort of then put forward for a few mandatories that fell, for, fell through, a few fell through, uh, two or three. Um, and then I finally got one sort of um, set up with Johnny Coyle, who was up for the fight. Um, it's just a shame they didn't put him in, you know, a couple of months ago as, as, a, as an um, opponent for the Eliminator, because he, he actually wanted to, wanted to fight. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for him, and you know, um, unfairly for him. I know what what the position is like for him now, but I've had this uh, big opportunity come up, um, sort of out of the blue. We just got a phone call one day. Would I be interested in taking this fight? And obviously, obviously, we said yes. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have been very. It would have been a very long conversation saying you're interested. I mean, this, we talked a little bit about during the press conference. This is the real European title. You have things like the WBO European title. Which I believe, unless the ruling has been made, has been changed, if you box for a WBO European title, you can't box for the EBU for two years. I think that's one of the rulings. So then this is the real European title to you, isn't it? So. Yeah. Well, this is you know this is the proper one. You know there there is these different ones that have come. I think the IBF have come out with something now as well. I don't, I don't even know what it's called, but they. Um, they're sort of making their own ones up as they go along, just like the, the sport's so fractured nowadays, isn't it, with all these different world titles, they're now bringing in all these different European titles and, you know, continental titles, different things like that, but I mean, this is the genuine European title, so, and this is the, you know, the most historic one, the one that's been around for the most. Indeed. So, really excited. I think Barry had it at one stage, didn't he, the EBU title? Yeah, yeah, I think he may have, I'd have to go through yeah, work, yeah. I'm pretty sure he had it, it didn't look the same <laughs> as it does now, so, you know, time has moved on, Yeah. and obviously, you know, such a massive opportunity. Is this your world title fight, Joe? Is this, you know, if, if for whatever reason, but you, you win and box it ends tomorrow, I think you could probably be happy with that being a Absolutely. European champion. Absolutely. I mean, if, you, I, so. if I won the European title, yeah, I could retire the day after. I'm not going to, but I could retire the day after and be happy with my career. You know, coming from, you know, the expectations that were sort of placed upon me, really starting out from boxing. Uh, you know, this is way more than I could have ever achieved. You know, I started boxing as physiotherapy and now I'm challenging for a European title, a genuine European title. So, you know, this is a really, really massive one for me. I just hope uh, a lot of people come out and support me for it. You know, a lot of people tune in at home. Um, yeah, well, hopefully come people come and buy tickets and yeah. come to the show. Yeah. But this is going to really put you on the map, isn't it, with a good performance? Channel 5, you know, that, 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 that audience, isn't it, you know, did, the intermediate audience, you know, that you wouldn't normally get for a boxing show, you know, because it's on terrestrial television. You're going to get, you're going to, you're going to be broadcast with an audience who might not always watch boxing. That's the Abs case, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. When it's on Channel Five, people just scrolling through their remote, you know, that pops up. Oh, what's this like boxing European title? Oh, oh, tune in and have a watch. What's going on? Yeah. You know, normally, you know, if you're on, on the other stuff, you know, the paid for channels and everything like that, which you'll watch if you're a boxing fan. But you know, if you're if you only have like a small interest in boxing, you you're flicking through and you see it's on there. You know, hopefully they'll watch you know the more eyes that come to the sport that's great and obviously you know the more eyes on me is better for me so fingers crossed yeah of course of course you are the underdog against against your jit there's no getting away from that is he he's a defending champion he's got some good wins on his record you know but you won the english title as an underdog you pushed very very hard for the british title as an underdog is, is that a tag you relish in this fight yeah i'm, I'm always the underdog no i always am and i'm happy for it you know it's what i enjoy i enjoy it you know there's no pressure you know, there's all the pressures on him, you know, but I mean, we're in England, you know, I'm the, I'm the home fighter, you know, he may be the, uh, the favourite, but 
I've boxed many times, you know, against the favourite and beat the favourite. And he's actually, believe it or not, the fifth unbeaten southpaw. Yes, we discussed this off yeah. camera. Who were the Who were the other four? Um, I boxed uh, Philip Bowes. He was unbeaten at the time for the Southern Era title. I boxed Anthony Hardy for the English title. Anthony Upton and then Jack Catterall as well. So that's four very good unbeaten southpaws. And that's is my fifth one. You yeah. Know, so. You know, I'm used to that style, you know, I'm used to it, I've, I'm, the amount of southpaws I keep fighting. I don't know. You won't need that much southpaw sparring then, will you, really? No, so, no, I'm pretty used to it. Yeah, pretty used to it. Don't probably more of a shot boxing someone with the right hand, wouldn't it? Absolutely, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent, fantastic. Um, I believe we're going to do all the heads, heads and further press here and so on. Joe, as always, a pleasure, thanks for taking the time to talk to us and we'll see you on Fight Night. Right, thank you very much,